Now that the exam is so close, the essays I'm going to bring you are from students who are writing re really well. Uh, so this is highly effective revision for you. So thank you, Science Fanatic, um, who tells me he's made his essay as best as he can. And the title uh, is based on the opening stage directions of an Inspector Calls. Uh, how does Priestley present these and other ideas about Eric in an Inspector Calls? And the ideas are uh, Eric being not quite at ease, half shy, half assertive. In an Inspector Calls, Eric is clearly presented to be a character with many secrets. That's a good opening statement. It doesn't include the Priestley's point of view yet, which is what I want for my A and A star. Through Priestley's characterization of Eric, we see him to be a young man uncomfortable in the environment in which he resides. Uh, you don't need that in. Uh, okay, it's still it's okay. It's a good introduction because it's brief because uh, you don't get marks for your introduction. Um, but it's missing this idea of Priestley's purpose, which I'm going to want to see in your essay. As the curtain rises, Eric is shown to display suspicious behaviour. When Mr. Burling is referring to what clothes mean to a woman, he says eagerly, yes, I remember. The use of the stage direction eagerly reflects that Eric is incredibly keen and desperate to talk about this subject matter with his father, probably because he usually has nothing of relevance to say to him, and he wants to be treated like a man in his father's eyes. Um, that's a very well-made point. I don't agree with it. But that's irrelevant. You've made a really good point about a quotation. Um, and you've got single word quotations that you're analysing in detail. That's an A and A star skill. This could represent Eric's struggle in being recognised as a father in his, uh, as an adult in his father's eyes. Now that's also very true, but you've just said that here. So you've only just repeated a point that you've just made. However, we see that in all his excitement, Eric forgot, we always write about text in the present tense, so forgets, that what he was ref referencing is a secret. The fact that he has to check himself in front of his father. Ah, now I do agree with your interpretation. That's an interesting uh, interpretation of um, check himself. Well done. Again, you're integrating short quotations. That's an A and A style skill. Uh, and soon-to-be brother-in-law suggests that Eric isn't used to speaking to them openly and could suggest that Eric is an isolated member of the family who usually keeps things to himself. A very well-developed point, all that coming from that small quotation. In this way, Priestley, get the right spelling of Priestley, by the way, L-E-Y, could be subtly referencing his message of social responsibility or indeed responsibility in general. And now you're starting to write about Priestley's purpose, and uh, I'm going to be fully satisfied that you're in A and A star territory. Uh, by the way, when you posted this, you didn't paragraph it very well. Every time you've used a connective, I've made a paragraph. Uh, so furthermore, that wasn't a paragraph. Um, although I think was, in addition to this wasn't. Um, so really, when you're looking at a new point, or looking at the same point but from an alternative point of view, you must start a new paragraph. Uh, right, so we were here. Burling has not nurtured his child well, is often cold towards him and takes no responsibility for his personal development. And as a result, Eric has become a man who has become secluded and a man not able to share his own thoughts and feelings. Um, that's brilliantly written. Uh, we might want another example, for example, when uh, he says um, you're not the sort of father a chap can turn to, I think is the quotation, um, when he confesses to stealing money. Uh, never have a paragraph without a quotation in it is my advice. It is effective that Priestley structures this occurrence at the exposition of the play, very good use of the word exposition, to suggest that all is not well internally in this seemingly perfect family, but it also foreshadows Eric's involvement with the inspector. Well, that's a great idea. Why does it foreshadow, or how does it foreshadow that? Um, and a very good structure point. Uh, you're telling us exactly why Priestley has given us this moment at the beginning rather than later. Furthermore, I think the way Priestley structures, not, well, actually, no, it's Priestley in the past tense. Yeah, because it's not an actual 
quote from the play. I'll accept the past tense here. My apologies. Priestley structured this part of the play is particularly effective as previously we were told that they were all pleased with themselves. Because this internal conflict exists, Priestley could perhaps, well done on the spelling there, be highlighting that the lives of the upper middle class are not perfect, and in their struggle to the top, qualities such as personal development and honesty suffer, as we see in Eric's half-shy, half-assertive nature. Um, yes, that is a well-made point. Um, I'd like a little bit more proof, but I don't necessarily need it. At the minute, I'm toying between A and A star with your answer, and I just want to be slightly more convinced. Eric is revealed to have a drinking problem fairly early in the play. He gets squiffy and acts in a very strange and uncomfortable manner through the inspector. Um, I think towards the inspector might be better. Eric is forced to admit that when he was drunk, that he was in a state when a chap easily turns nasty and that he is not able to remember that's the hellish thing. His lack of detail about the occurrence and the vague words such as state and nasty causes the reader to wonder what he did and what kind of state he was in. We, as the audience, you don't have to keep repeating that, we means it, so we unfortunately come to the conclusion that he forced himself upon Eva and that his alcohol problem is a serious addiction that causes him to do unthinkable acts. However, he does show remorse through the use of the word hellish, uh, full stop before this, this loaded word that has connotations to torment and despair suggests that he wants to leave his actions in the depths of the underground as he is so alarmed by what he did. Um, so this bit here, he wants to deny his actions is really uh, what this means. This is a clumsy way of saying it. So he wants to deny his actions as he is so alarmed by what he has done. Uh, this paragraph is your best written one so far because um, you go into such detail about several of the individual words in the quotations. Uh, this one is definitely leading me more towards an A-star grade for your essay. Although Eric's actions can be seen as the most despicable, he does seem to show the most remorse for what happened to Eva. That's a very balanced point, that. Um, nearly at breaking point, then you killed her. She came to you to protect me and you turned her away. In the height of dramatic tension between him and his mother, we, again you don't need as the audience, clearly see that Eric is completely distressed about the fate of either Smith. The stage direction, nearly at breaking point, suggests that his sadness and rage is so much that he could collapse with grief at any point. Um, this is lovely. I'm desperate for you to link it to Priestley's purpose at some point here. But the use of the word nearly suggests that the only thing keeping him up is his anger at his mother for turning Eva away. He wants to make her understand what she's done and refuses to shadow, I think you mean shoulder, all the blame himself. Uh, so this is um, a very good piece of language analysis. But again, I want you to link it to Priestley's purpose. Why, why is he doing this? How is giving Eric this revelation going to help us to change our minds or the 1945 audience to change theirs um, about their social responsibility. Um, you don't need to write loads about that author's purpose, it would just be a sentence here. In addition to this priestly subtle use of hyphens to break up Eric's speech uh, and demonstrate his discomfort ensures that Eric's anger is demonstrated in not only the content of his words but the way he says them also. Um, what I like about these couple of paragraphs, though, is you're starting to tell us about how the character is forced, sorry, how the actor is forced to perform the character. And that does link to Priestley's purpose, even though you're not spelling that out. This is done in order to demonstrate his overwhelming sadness and his half assertive nature. Well done. Lastly, when the inspector's val validity is brought up, it's clear that Eric understands Priestley's message of social responsibility. So you are now bringing it back towards Priestley's purpose um, and I mentioned social responsibility earlier didn't I? Um, so I'm really pleased that you've done that here. It's what happened to the girl and what we all did to her that matters. The use of the inclusive pronoun we 
shows that Eric fully understands Priestley's message of social responsibility. He's not just blaming his mother, as he was previously, and realises that through their selfish actions, they all had a negative effect on a poor working class girl. This is a very sophisticated idea. Uh, most students just say, well, everybody was responsible, weren't they? Um, but you've subtly suggested that Eric has is, is, um, done something incredibly bad. He then blames his mother because she's the last person who could have saved Eva. But actually, he then comes to realise that perhaps her actions weren't worse than his. Uh, so you've got a subtle argument going on here, and that is indicative of an A-star response. Overall, Eric is seen as one of the famous younger generation who need to be educated and should be instructed to take care of one another. He shows clear contrast between his parents' capitalistic and harsh views and shows empathetic qualities. He also shows how people have the opportunity to learn from their mistakes and the imperfection, that should be, of the upper middle classes, as Eric also shows quality of the lower classes, human qualities. Um, well done. This is quite a powerful ending here. You'll know from my previous videos that I like you to uh, finish with a quotation. Uh, you've done that in this part of the conclusion. Uh, well done. Um, so you've persuaded me that you deserve an A star here because you keep linking your A star um, ideas about language. I say keep. You usually link them to Priestley's purpose. So I'm convinced that you've built up an argument that is about, if we go to the beginning of your essay, um, why Priestley describes Eric that way and what Priestley is up to when he presents Eric that way. Um, so well done. Hopefully uh, anyone watching this video will see how to get an A star. And uh, science fantastic. Good luck in the exam on Monday. And uh, let me know how you get on. Uh, if you want more videos, as usual, just subscribe.